any point can be made in one sentence. But that isn't very helpful to anyone who doesn't get it in one sentence, nor is it a comfort to those who can. Yeah, sure, I'm a nihilist, yeah, I know there's no point, yeah, I know it's all the same shit in a different toilet, but I'm still interested in why it's green sometimes. It's because I drink too much Mountain Dew Pitch Black. Why do purple drinks make your shit green? Yet beet juice makes it red and scared you got hemorrhoids. When I started smoking weed, I got into anime in a different way. I've always claimed to love dense media the most, to love multi-layered and complex experiences which incorporate as many simultaneous elements as possible. This has always been my justification for preferring the medium of animation. It has the highest opportunity of any medium to convey the greatest number of meaning layers simultaneously. There is potential in video games to reach even higher levels of compactness, but little effort being made in that direction, because the length of development time disincentivizes minimizing the scale of the product. In fact, the same problem exists in animation, but it's only because density isn't really what anyone wants on a grand scale. It's more that we who worship it are just in love with variance, and with density you can rapid fire variance. Suffice it to say, as I did in my last video, you can get as much out of one Ghibli film as you can out of several hundred episodes of boilerplate TV anime, especially if you're high. But this doesn't help you with the problem of time. See, maybe I can get more out of watching the same movie 10 times than I can out of watching 40 different shows in the same time, but that does kinda sound, you know, boring? And there's eventually going to be diminishing returns, at least until the context of my engagement has changed enough to make a substantial impact in my understanding of the work. In that last video I did, I talked about my history with analyzing Fooly Cooly, but when I wrote my big six-part journey into the center of it back in 2009, I did so after watching the show three times consecutively, once with direct commentary. I got as much out of it as my brain at the time was capable of picking up on, and I vomited every single minute detail of thought I had about it onto the page. I would love to have everything I consume be just as dense as Fooly Cooly, but it just isn't feasible. We don't have enough artists with enough capability, or enough audiences who can even perceive the value of it, and contribute that value to its creation to make it feasible. I can cry all day about why good anime is hard to make, but the fact of the matter is just that not that many people actually care about watching good anime, or could even tell it if they saw it. I'm being aggressive with my language here, so let's decompress again. Hi, I'm Digibro, famous producer of the video Objectively Good Doesn't Fucking Exist. I made this video with the hopes of ending the discussion wholesale, and it honestly kind of worked. This video has been the most effective call to arms that I've ever produced. Because I've railed against the concept of objective critique so hard for so long, and worked so tirelessly to phrase my stance agreeably, plus it helps that I'm just correct, I don't even have to fight the battle myself anymore. When someone uses the word objective in my comments or in response to my tweets, I can almost guarantee that someone else will show up to argue that point on my behalf. Because for those who agree with the stance, it's just as frustrating to them as it is to me. So when I talk about good anime, I'm being facetious. I'm compressing a broad swath of meaning into one word for ease of use. I tend to do this because I have a difficult time writing each of my videos as though they were my first. I've been doing this for a long fucking time, and anyone who's been watching me long enough knows that I repeat myself ad nauseum. After all, there are only so many unique things that one person can come up with to say on their own, and the variables need to be packaged within in the context of a larger piece to be satisfying to an audience. Which is all why the idea of going post-food is kind of hilarious to me. When I see people trying to waste less time, I envy them because I'm so desperate to waste more of it. Casey Neistat is a walking, uh, running paradox. He constantly insists on an ideology of working at all times, barely sleeping, keeping his mind and body active, and trying to find a sense of accomplishment in everything he does. Yet this motherfucker posts the same goddamn video every single goddamn day. Okay, not literally, but when you've watched a couple thousand of them like I have, they bleed together pretty quickly. And I'm sure plenty of people would say the same about my content, especially if you watch my podcasts and Let's Plays. But that's because it's all a waste of time, and that's kind of the point of it. 
How are you supposed to use all these hours in the day? Work towards advancing humanity? Sure, you can contribute to that along the way, but change takes a lot of time and you're pushing a hell of a boulder. It's not like you can just go to the forefront of advancement and make new shit every day and expect that to change the world. You might learn about the final boss at the start of the game, but it's gonna take 80 hours of fucking grinding to get there because that's literally life. You're probably gonna lose some party members along the way. Hell, you will most likely be one of them depending on what you've said as your endpoint and say you reach it. Then what? Better picture a new boss or you're gonna get real bored real fast. See, that's the thing. Purpose is step one. Living is all the other steps. Why is ignorance bliss? Because ignorant people don't have to consider it, they just have to do it. Have a family, bam, you've done your part. That's enough for most people. As long as they can follow the candy trail laid out for them and view the box that falls over them as a house instead of a trap, they can be content there. But what if you're a radical dude with a rude dude who wants to branch out and do something totally different? Well, it's the same damn story. So you went off the grid and became a YouTuber who makes all their money from Patreon. What now? Uh, make the videos better, I guess? Keep sharpening that tongue, yet doing little but growing old? I guess you're inspiring people, but it's not like you can post 10 videos a day and expect people to keep up, even if you can make that many. In fact, most people can't even tell the difference between the videos that take you an hour to edit and the ones that take a month, so if you're putting that much effort in, it's just self-serving. You're just trying to waste enough time to feel like you actually did something. When your brain moves a million miles an hour and you're always thinking, always analyzing, always operating a few channels of thought, watching something too thin is suffering. Not because it's bad or stupid, it just doesn't work right with your brain. Sometimes watching anime is actually physically painful for me. But I've told you a million times, objective good and bad doesn't exist. I even stated once that you should be able to enjoy literally anything if you set your mind to it. But uh, why would you? Unless I guess you were that fucking bored and out of new things to do. And that's kind of my point, every single time. Thin media isn't bad, it just bores me. Dense media isn't good, it just keeps me occupied. I already know the point of all art, I explained it last time. When I first had that realization, I didn't even want to make videos anymore. I thought, if this is true, art is a huge waste of time. Except I can't stop watching anime. Why? The biggest misunderstanding that young people have about the world is that there's anything significant or different to do in it. At the start of 2017, my cost of living was so far below my income that I could pretty much do whatever I wanted. I lived in Virginia Beach, supposedly the best place in America to live, according to Forbes, and yet I couldn't find anything to do. Nowhere to go more interesting than the internet, nothing to look at more engaging than anime, no one to talk to who I could relate to as much as my friends from the Procrastinators podcast. The only thing I could find to do outside my house, which was better than anything I could do inside, was to eat. Eat, so I would eat out for nearly every meal. Why does everyone want money so much? It's all because of misunderstanding. Everyone feels this pit in their soul that there's supposed to be something bigger to work towards, and there's just no evidence for it. All of the evidence points to mindset being the only thing that determines happiness. You can either be satisfied that your mere existence and propagation is enough to serve your purpose, or you can be satisfied that whatever arbitrary goal you've given yourself to work towards has put you on the path. But when they say it's not the destination, it's the journey, all they mean is you better fucking get used to just living day to day because that's all you're ever actually going to be doing. And that is fucking frustrating. It's why most people find nihilism depressing, and it's why those obsessed with the absurd tend to have suicidal urges. It's why the ages of 14 through 23 were an abject nightmare for me, and why I could suddenly relate all too well to every depressed famous rapper talking about how fame and fortune has done nothing for them and instead made it further apparent just how othered and alien they always were when people treat them like something other than human for the act of creating something to express their humanity. Humanity. Thankfully, I figured out you can kill that by just revealing as much as possible about yourself. No matter how frustrating it might be to face the void, there's no avoiding it. You can make up some bullshit explanation for why there's totally inherent meaning, guys, I mean it, but why the hell would that ever be true? Just set some goals and work towards them. Don't try to make it more than it is, just man up and do what you gotta do to live. If you need to worship something, worship the tenacity of life itself. If you need purpose, find it in your instincts. We can't explain a point for all this, but we can just let a general sense of hope that there is one linger in the back of our minds 
Christians and be satisfied with that at least. That's all most religious people are really doing in the first place anyways. I can't consume media that's too thin, but I run out of things that are as dense as I want them to be constantly. I settle for middle grounds often. I mostly listen to structured music. I mostly watch 22 minute TV anime. I mostly play straightforward action games. They need thought, but not much. Just enough that they can keep my brain occupied, because this mythical ability to turn it off I suspect is code for I am brain dead. I had a revelation listening to enough fan comments over the years and realizing that literally, literally what people wanted from me was just long content. Not podcasts or let's plays though, because even if they are content rich and dense and potentially have more of interest to present than my main channel edited videos, they just won't be perceived that way as a matter of category. And that's not because there's no audience for that content, but because it's not what I'm the best at and uniquely offer that has been sorely desired within anime culture. Six minute deep compressed videos are cool and all, but will they waste enough time to take up enough of your day to feel like you did something? If I could have made the same point in 30 minutes, but filled in more entertaining details and tangents so that it feels like a full course meal instead of just a $10 perfectly cooked appetizer, my audience will feel more full. Again, being post-food cracks me up, but only because I actually love food. I will take as much time out of my day as possible to eat. I will drive all the way across town to go to a favorite restaurant, wait as long as it takes, pay as much as it costs, because the entire point is to waste time doing something I like. It's why I will produce four videos in a day, and why I will marathon dozens of anime in a week, and try to make sex last 45 minutes every time, and why when I was younger I wouldn't buy an album unless it was an 80 minute prog opus, because I want to waste as much fucking time doing things I like as possible. I have a lot of admiration for the samurai strike, one hit one kill, the soul of wit that is brevity, but who the fuck cares about wit? Why would we prize wit when ignorance is bliss? What point is there in rejecting bliss? Don't be pretentious, it takes 10,000 hours of practice to master wit, and you could have done anything with that time. Just try to spend it doing shit you won't regret and you'll be fine.